a personal friend of mine, a longtime healthcare activist, Asian American documentary filmmaker, and environmental activist as well, proud member of Progressive Asian Network for Action and Healthcare for LA, Cheng Sim Lim. Cheng Sim. Thank you, David. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Cheng Sim Lim, and I'm here on behalf of uh, PANA, Progressive Asian Network for Action, and Healthcare for All Los Angeles to join forces with all of you to say loud and clear, save our seniors. Yeah. Yeah. When they were young, our Japanese-American elders at Sakura suffered a grave injustice. They were incarcerated during World War II for being of Japanese descent. Today, in their 80s and 90s, they face another injustice. They face eviction in the middle of a pandemic because Pacifica, the company that owns Sakura, wants to convert the care facility into apartments. Now, Sakura has thankfully been COVID-free, but apart from Sakura, there is no other COVID-safe facility in LA County that offers Japanese bilingual, bicultural services and accepts Medi-Cal. The elders here fear that Pacifica wants to transfer them to another facility it owns, KI, which the LA Times has identified as the deadliest nursing home in California. There have been over 100 resident deaths at KI due to COVID. Uh, right. I'm an immigrant, and I bet any of you here who are from first or second generation immigrant families will understand um, this. Being able to communicate in one's primary language, Japanese in this case, or be it Spanish, Korean, Chinese, Armenian, etc., and being in a culturally welcoming environment is important to the well-being of our elders. If our elders cannot communicate with nursing staff, they will be cut off from receiving the care they need. And if they are not getting the foods and activities they enjoy, they are more likely to become depressed and shut down, causing their health to decline precipitously. This is the no choice our Japanese American elders at Sakura face. Move to a facility where they, they won't have culturally sensitive care and risk their health and lives, or move to the deadliest COVID nursing care facility in California and risk their health and lives. This is the kind of cruelty built into the current system where long-term care is run as a profit-making business. This is corporate violence whose victims are predominantly low-income BIPOC seniors on medi -Cal. and in the case of Sakura, anti-Asian violence. Hey, in the same way that Asian Americans are mounting community self-defense against thugs who target and attack Asian American seniors walking in the neighborhood, we must mount self-defense against corporate thugs so all our seniors can grow old with love and dignity. And what does this self-defense involve? The first and necessary step, we must push for AB 279 to pass in the state legislature to stop Pacifica and other nursing home operators from cutting services and transferring seniors during COVID. And I want to shout out to Assembly Member Miguel Santiago for co-introducing this bill in the State Assembly. Now, but what happens, what happens after COVID? Uh, AB 279 is a stopgap measure that ends when the COVID emergency is over. We need a lasting solution beyond AB 279 that removes the ability for any company to profit out of denying care to our seniors. And that lasting solution I want to suggest to you is CalCare AB 1400. All right. Yeah. Shout out again to Assembly Member Santiago because he is a joint author of AB 1400. So, CalCare is the most powerful elder self-defense tool out there. CalCare is like Medicare except it's supercharged, it's super improved, and expanded. CalCare will cover long-term care, 
And if seniors want to receive care in their homes, health care will cover that too. Health care will provide multilingual, culturally sensitive care for anyone who needs it. In fact, health care will cover all medically necessary care, including in addition to long-term care, dental, vision, hearing, mental health, substance abuse treatment, and prescription drugs. Plus, CalCare will expand all this wonderful health coverage to all the residents of California. Everybody will be protected. Nobody will be left out. All right, but wait, there's more. CalCare means we will all pay a big fat zero in premiums, deductibles, and copays. And we can all go to any doctor or hospital we choose. There will be no more surprise bills because we went to an emergency room in a hospital that is out of network. Everybody will be in network, nobody will be out. And CalCare does all of this, and it saves money too. Anywhere from 37 to $50 billion per year in healthcare spending in California, depending on the study. So, I want to call out to Assemblymember Santiago. <clears throat> Assembly Member Santiago, we urge you to fight hard for AB 279 along with CalCare AB 1400 in the State Assembly. And we will fight hard right there with you. Okay, because, because our elders deserve to live with love and dignity. Because human lives matter over corporate profit. Because we will not allow anti-Asian violence whether it stems from hate or Pacifica's greed. Hey, we will have health care for all instead of insurance for some. We will save our seniors. Thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much, Chang Sim. Here for Chang Sim Lim. Give her a hand one more time. I've been reminded that we have a table right here for Assembly Bill 279. Uh, if you haven't filled out a sheet, if you haven't wrote a letter, please come to this table. Please come to this table, AB 279. Mitchell, raise your hand. If this passes, if this passes, then it will stop any kind of transfers and evictions during the pandemic. Okay, if this passes, has a chance in July. Please come on over to this table. One other thing at this table, we're writing letters, more letters, more petitions to stop Pacifica's second plan. Now, you all know that we defeated the first plan, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's good on us. But they resubmitted a second one, and we're gonna defeat that one too. So come on over to this table, and please sign up for that. Thank you very much. Our next speaker. Chinatown Community for Economic Development. They've been on the forefront in Los Angeles, protecting seniors from getting kicked out. Just the same thing that we're doing. The same thing, except we're doing nursing homes and they're doing regular homes. So I want to invite Tiffany Lamb from CCED. Let's hear it for Tiffany. Say it with me. We will fight. We will fight. We will win. We will win. I see here today. We are here today because we are here to fight back. My name is Tiffany and I stand here as a community member of Boyle Heights. I grew up in this neighborhood. I see Sakura Gardens, one of the few bi-culturally sensitive, bi-lingually sensitive care facilities in this entire country. I see Mariachi Plaza, Green Street Shoal, Hollenbeck Park, Evergreen Cemetery. I'm also seeing this neighborhood change right before my eyes. The people who own it, the people who own and work for this private real estate developer, Pacifica, they know what they're doing. They are buying time to kick out working class folks and destroy this vibrant neighborhood. People would come up and ask me, what was it like growing up? One of the few Asians, one of the few Chinese. I have never been as fearful for my safety and as ready to fight for my future as I stand here now at, the, at Boyle Heights. It's no surprise that Pacifica not only owns this care facility in Boyle Heights, but right there in Lincoln Heights. A 
another facility they had mishandled and planned to evict residents. To care for our families, to create community, to fight for our cultural ties, we are here today to mobilize Boyle Heights. We are here to mobilize our histories as Asians, Latinos, as the working class. I also see in Boyle Heights the 6th Street Bridge going up. $588 million, 40% over budget and further delayed. Here to make it even easier for gentrification and displacement, we see a downtown and arts district to further extend itself here into Boyle Heights. The developer from Denver was quoted in the LA Times, quote, you have to look past the market cycles that stall and sometimes slow down investment, he said. You have to be willing to look at the evolution of an area over decades. And over decades, what I have seen is community. I have seen Japanese history. I have seen Russian Jewish history. I've seen Latino history. Royal Heights is not alone. The families of Secura are not alone. Everywhere I look, yes, I see development, but I also see community. There are too many examples of government and developers all around us colluding. 1,000 live work units for Sears Towers, a biotech corridor, corridor of U USC, bringing in a new hotel, jobs, jobs for whom? An LA River plan to, quote, revitalize. We know what that means, so white people can feel safe. I don't, we don't even have time to go into Metro and the Gold Line. I am here today as a volunteer organizer with Chinatown Community for Equitable Development, where we fight with local residents and small business owners against the everyday threats of capitalism, gentrification, and displacement. Rising rents, landlord harassment, displacement, the lack of community resources like a grocery store or a laundromat. Chinatown is not alone. Boyle Heights is not alone. The families of Secura are not alone. Our Save Our Seniors fight will continue to push AB 279. We will strategize. We are here to mobilize. This is not only how we win this fight, but how we build community, how we build a movement. Join me again. We will fight. We will fight. We will mobilize. We will mobilize. And we will win. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very much. Have another hand for Tiffany, please. How about a hand for Tiffany? Thank you. As you know, our health department is the one that regul regulates and investigates complaints here at Pacifica. The agency that's been doing a pretty good job is the uh, health inspectors, and we've gotten a lot of assistance from one of our elected officials. And that would be Supervisor Hilda Solis. As you know, Hilda Solis used to be Secretary of Labor, and in that capacity, she was a great friend of working people. In fact, under her tenure, they were able to recover almost $500 million and went back wage theft. She also set up the Asian Pacific Islander Initiative for Working Asian Pacific Islanders. So I wanted to welcome here, representing Supervisor Hildo Solis, Mr. Hong Nguyen. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, right. Thank, you. Thank you, David. And hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, the supervisor, of course, stands in solidarity with our Save Our Seniors Network and opposes Pacifica's scheme to put profits over people. And that's what they're doing. That's exactly what they're doing. We oppose the transition, the so-called transition plan once and we'll do it again. Uh, we supported uh, Assemblymember Santiago's AB 279 and we will continue to do so. And so I'm honored to stand here and represent her. Just know that we are with you with the community and we want these seniors to stay where they are and be have a community have a place to call home so this what they're doing Pacifica is doing is reprehensible and we are totally against it so uh, as an Asian American myself uh, it's outrageous and um, I'm honored to be sharing space with you I have grandparents and uh, this just breaks my heart what they're doing so just know that our office is with you and um, 
we've been in conversation with David and the Save Our Seniors Network, uh, as well as the Community Advisory Board, to uh, do what, what we can to help this situation. So thank you so much. Hi. We have a uh, fourth generation Boyle Heights resident and her um, great bachan was inside Cairo home some time ago. Dr. Nadine Diaz, longtime resident of Boyle Heights and healthcare activist. Let's welcome Nadine. Nadine Diaz, and I am a fourth generation constituent and stakeholder of Boyle Heights. My mother is Japanese American and was born in Tule Lake in 1942. My father, Dr. Anthony Diaz, was born here in Boyle Heights, and my parents met at Roosevelt High School and were married in 1959. I was born in 1962. I am a geriatric social worker, that is my specialty, and what I can tell you today, this is nothing new on what's happening to the seniors here at Sakura. It happened in 1492 when Columbus came to this country and murdered and raped and killed Native Americans. It happened in 1610 when the African slaves were come, came to America and used and exploited to build this country. It also happened in 1848 when the Treaty of Hidalgo was never honored and Mexicans today are still being abused. We have a grave issue here at our hands and we must rise to the occasion. Bob Marley said, get up and stand up. And that's what we are doing today. The numbers here are going to grow bigger than what Pacifica can handle. And I am honored that Miguel Santiago has created legislation to help us. But that's not enough. That is not enough. We need to organize, mobilize, strategize, and get our local, federal, and state officials to stand with us. Where is Kamala Harris? I hope she's with us today. Where is Biden? I hope he's with us today. He's in office because we put him in office. Every day in America, as I said, every day in America, 10,000 people turn 65. This is utterly abuse. This is neglect. This is systematic racism. It's nothing new in 2021. It's nothing new. I have been in this community and have fought for our community against the gentrification, against not being at the table and giving our voice for our people. Today, we will not tolerate it. So Pacifica, get ready because you are out of here. As Emiliano Zapata said, I'd rather stand up, excuse me, I'd rather, pardon me, this is emotional for me, it's so emotional for me, it hurts, it hurts my family, it hurts you, it hurts our seniors who are suffering. Pacifica is taking literally the mouth, the food out of their mouth. It's taking the life out of them. Our seniors have a right to live with dignity and respect and integrity. We are here red, yellow, brown, black, white. We are here today and we are going to be here tomorrow. And we must educate and inform our children. One last thing. As Emiliano Zapata said, I'd rather die on my feet than on my knees. Thank you. Reverend E from We Can Foundation. Reverend. How do you do?
Put the mic in the mic holder. She gets. Nothing. Put it in the clip. Blessings is back, good to be back, and I'm sending our sentiments from various organizations. I'm sending grief, greetings from the Congress of Racial Equality, California, Dr. Adrian Dove. I'm also sending blessings from Eagle Wings of Enlightenment. Mata G sends her blessings and support. I'm looking also for healthy African-American family. Felicia sending her blessings as well. As you know, there's many demonstrations, many organizations who want to be out here because our brothers and sisters, we are needed. We need to support our community, our elders. At the same time, uh, I have other folks that are going to be behind me, Reverend Bowie, and also the key person from the National Net, uh, National Action Network will say a few words. That's from New York to the West, from the East Coast to the West Coast. That's going to be the most. Okay, I'll step aside and give the sign to Reverend Bowie. No justice. No peace. 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 What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. From Reverend Al Sharpton, who is our founder and CEO, the National Action Network headquartered in New York. I'm Reverend Jonathan Mosey, Western Regional Director for the National Action Network. And we come to say that we stand with you in solidarity. We will not allow big business or profiteers to come in and move our elderly. One thing is for certain, if we live long enough, we'll be old too. Good afternoon and God bless each and every one of you. I'm Pastor Oliver E. Bowie, and I just simply come here as a servant of the Most High. And I'm here because it would be a tragedy as one who claims to serve the Most High God and would not stand up for the seniors. Stand up. Yes, you can give that a hand. I'm standing here because those in which they are trying to evict are those who paved the roads that I drive on. Those that they're trying to evict today are the ones who stood up that when it was time for me to get a job, I was able to get a job because they fought for me. I'm here today because when it was time where they said I couldn't live in particular communities and neighborhoods, those seniors that are in there stood up and made a way for me. And as they made a way, for me. Shame on us if we don't stand with them and stand for them. Stand for justice. Stand for love. Stand for righteousness. And that's why I'm here today. God bless you. Thank you so much. Let's hear it one more time for Reverend Boone and Reverend E and everyone else. Right after this, right after this, folks, get ready because we're going to have a picket line, a good old-fashioned picket line, the kind of stuff that they did to win the eight-hour working day on May 1st about 100 years ago. We're going to have that right here. Our next speaker is a friend of mine who does talk about dedication to working folks. He was a member of local 645 United Auto Workers for many, many years. He organized workers at General Motors Van Nuys. And when Little Tokyo was being gentrified and redeveloped, Mark and other people actually live there. They live there to fight gentrification. That's the kind of dedication that's needed to make social change. Mark Masaoka representing Nisei, Nikkei Progressives, and NCR, Nikkei for Civil Rights Redress. Mark. 
Thank you, David. I'm here representing Nikkei Progressives and NCRR. We are a multi-generational group of Japanese American community members based in Little Tokyo. And we are here today to stand with you in fighting the forced expulsion of our seniors. Pacifica is planning to do an unnecessary, forced, cruel, and life-threatening expulsion of our seniors in a game of musical chairs. They created openings at KI so they could plan to close down Sakura ICF and move the residents there to KI. And then later on they would like to close KI, move those residents again to another facility so they can close both these facilities, convert them into market rate housing, and make tens of millions of dollars. Our community has far too too much invested here. My grandmother used to live here. My wife and I were married not 50 yards away from here on the front lawn. And our brother-in-law continues to volunteer here every week teaching pottery classes to the residents. We have too much at stake here. We will not let this stand. All right. Not gonna let it stand, he says. How many people agree? No, so, way to go. Mr. Ryan Yoshia, Yoshika from the Japanese American Citizens League. Ryan, let's give it up for Ryan Yoshika. Yeah, so thank you everyone. I'm Ryan Yoshika from the Pacific Southwest District of the Japanese American Citizens League. And it's such an honor to be here with you, to pay respects to the people who have paved the way for all of us to be here, for all of us who can fight. We have the opportunity to fight for what they deserve because they fought for what we deserve back before us. So all the members of the Japanese American Citizens League from across the country, including San Fernando Valley, Greater Los Angeles, Orange County, and all the other and all the other chapters here in the Orange County or here in Southern California, and including chapters from Minnesota. Minnesota, Nebraska, Ohio, Las Vegas, or Nevada, and Arizona all are standing here together to make sure that these residents are treated with respect and aren't neglected. So thank you all very much for your time here, and thank you all for keeping on the fight. Thank you very much, Brian. Let's hear it again, Japanese American Citizens League. They have about 15 chapters who have endorsed and are supporting this. Now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to line up here and have a good old-fashioned picket. I want to point out Billy Yates. Billy, raise your hand, please. <coughs> Billy Yates right over here. Raise your hand. He has the bullhorn. He's going to be the person that's going to be setting up the picket line. Please listen to Billy. We have one pylon over here and one pylon at the end. One pylon here and one pylon at the end. So everyone, please grab a picket sign. Please grab a picket sign so that we can start off the picket right in front. Okay. And in the meantime, I wanted to recognize this Grace Yu. Grace, where are you? Grace, Grace ran for city council in Los Angeles, and she has honored us with our presence today. Grace is an activist, attorney, and she's in the audience here. Thank you very much. Just here for Grace. And we have Reverend Ray, I mean Minister Ray Fukumoto, he'll come. He's going to try to... Uh, He's going to try to lead us into this chant picket and chanting with his words. You know something, we're kind of like ending this whole thing and we kind of like, end, we'd like to end it on an up note before you actually start the chanting. As we get ready for this, I want you to move to the rhythm of music, move to the rhythm of joy. And that joy is the music of Obon. Kangie or Obon is a gathering of joy, a joy which has transcended just being a Buddhist event to one encompassing not only Japanese Americans but the local community as well. This music that we're going to play today is a fusion of J-Town and our Chicano neighbors from Boyle Heights sharing this joy as dance or simply moving to the sounds, sharing this moment of the here and now. A joy that has been absent at the KI facilities in a large part because of the 122 unnecessary deaths of our Nikkei seniors. So to keep it short, let's dance or move to show our solidarity with our abused seniors and the joy that is missing in their life. 
Let's dance. Odori Masho. Vamos a bailar. We are all connected. Todos estamos conectados. Bambutsu no Tsunagari. Okay, can we get you to line up now? Cool horn guy. Okay, while you're all lining up, I just want you to know, you don't have to dance to the music, just move. Follow the, follow the leader with the bullhorn, and we're going to start the music right now. Okay, here, 
Give me like this and then don't even look at it. Well, Thank you so much. 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 Th